Hey everyone, welcome back to the Schematica channel. Another tech tip for you here on Altium Designer. Today I'm doing something a little different. I'm actually using the footprint editor to make a graphic that's going to become part of a business logo. Um, it's Don't ask why I'm doing that. It's just the easiest way to get what's in my head onto you know, a business card. So, But part of it is an array of pads. Now, I know there are footprint wizards that'll generate BGAs and all of that, and I could use one of those if I wanted. But in, in creating this, I, I realized there's something I want to show you that's probably going to be so powerful if you didn't know it. Uh, after you learn this, these tricks, it's going to uh, really accelerate your productivity in this tool and uh, I'll show you by way of example so I want to place my pad array and uh, I'm on the wrong layer there so let me just change to top layer and I'll hit tab to set the pad properties these are not going to be designated pads I'll just call it X it's going to be on top layer and yeah I want it three millimeters by three millimeters and I hit enter and now I want an array of five by five so I need 25 in all and I could just manually place them and you can see Altium Design is automatically adding numerical suffixes even though I didn't want that I could do that and for this you know honestly creating this tech tip for you to watch on YouTube is taking me about 10 times longer than if I just wanted to make the the thing and get on with it you know but it's part of what I do right I can't help myself got to got to help people know what I know so um, so that's one way of doing it or I can select the one pad as my reference down in the corner and hit control X and set the reference it's hard to see that little crosshair but it's it's snapping the reference of the center of the pad and the and the grid point I set my grid to 100 mils by the way um, just to make it easy to work with. But the, the first port of call for placing any array of anything is setting the grid, right? So you can always do that hitting G. So one way of making this kind of thing easier is to make a very coarse grid and everything just snaps to it. So that's easy enough. But what if you're doing a lot of objects or placing wanting to place things in a very precise set of locations in XY that's regardless of whatever grid you have. And this works in the PCB editor as well as the footprint editor. And even uh, in a similar way, the same techniques can work for you in schematic. So I've cut that to the clipboard with a control X. And instead of control V, I could just paste a bunch of them. It's just like cl keep continuing clicking after you're in the place command anyway. But instead of doing that, I'm going to hit E to bring up the edit menu and use A for paste special. E then A is the shortcut. So here you can just do a normal paste if you change your mind or you can paste array. But here's the thing. I want a linear array. Actually, I want a square array with no text added, no, no numerical suffix. And the X and Y spacing is going to be 200 mils because they're all 200 mils apart so that the whole thing fits within one inch. Okay, well, I can do that and then place it, but the problem is the XY spacing goes X and Y, so you get a linear array heading in the same direction, and you could put negative numbers in the dialog and have it go the other way and what whatever, but it's always going to be a linear array. The only other option there is a circular array, so let's do that again, E then A, and paste array. It's kind of a little rhyme. I could do a circular array. So that's really useful for things like, you know, rings of LEDs and whatnot. But here's the deal. I can't, I can't make a matrix grid of these pads using this. So I could set my X spacing to 200, my Y to 0, and say 5. I only want 5, and then it'll give me 5 in a row. And I could copy and paste the row five times or copy that row and do a paste array. Control X, EA, paste array. And this time, 
set my X spacing to zero, but my Y spacing to 200 and do five of those because I've already captured the five in the row. So now I just want five rows spaced 200 apart vertically. So I can do that. That's quick and easy. Now I was going to just do that and be done with my, you know, and add whatever else I was going to add to this to make a logo. And it reminded me of a trick that I really did want to make this video about. So, so, so maybe you've already learned something that you didn't know about before. Maybe you're a new Altium user and you didn't know about the paste array tool and this is really handy. I'll just remind you, we have wizards for making BGA footprints that are far superior um, that we can use. Either, either PCB libraries has their software or you could, there's a lot of tools for doing it. And Altium is, even also has its own IPC compliant footprint wizard built in. But one thing that it can't do, that, that IPC wizard can't do through hole pads can't do through holes. So if you need a, an array of through hole vias or pads um, that aren't stitching vias, there's a tool for that too. Uh, then, and you want to put that in a footprint, this is, this is one, one thing that's going to help you do that. So already this has been useful, but stick around because here's where the real juice is. Okay, what I'm about to do, this is the juice. This is going to change your life if you haven't done this before. I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to control X to cut that pad to the clipboard on reference. And I'm once again going to EA paste array. But this time I'm going to give myself all 25 of the pads I want. And I'm going to set the spacing to zero and zero. Now, why would I dump them all over the top of each other like that? I'll show you. There they are. That looks like one pad. But there's actually 25 of them. And if I select that, it's really, really white because there's a multiple stacked items selection there. Um, so the transparency is faded completely to white. Now, remember this shortcut. Remember this. Shift F12. Say, say it with me. Say it with me. Shift F12. Say it in the comments below. Comment below. Shift F12. My favorite one of my favorite shortcuts in this tool. Okay, the other way you can find this, Shift F12, which brings up what's called the list panel, is in the panels menu down in the corner. So if you get lost, look for the PCB list panel. Now this says PCB, this says PCB lib list because I'm in, in the footprint editor, but again, the list panel is available in all editors in Altium Designer except for the text editor. Did you know there was a text editor in there? I bet you didn't. Haha. -ha. That's another topic for another day. So subscribe, hit the thumbs up, come back. Anyway, uh, the list panel, let's open it. Now what we're looking at here is there's a filter at the top. Normally out of the box it's set to view non-masked objects from current component and all objects and you see everything. It's essentially a spreadsheet view of all the data in the current file that you're editing. I've selected those pads already. So what I want to do is, and I'm going to change their locations here. So I'm going to go from view to edit mode. That allows you to edit the cells, which are edit editable. There are certain cells sometimes in the list panel, which are system, system things that you can't change. Uh, but by and large, they're editable. And you can do it directly, but but I'm going to go for selected objects only. And there's other filters here. So you can do this in the current component or all components in the library, which in, in this particular instance wouldn't make sense. And there's another filter for object type in case you'd made a selection that had too many different kinds of objects. And you said, well, yeah, I know I drew the mouse around everything. I just want the pads. In my case, I only selected the pads. So that's all we're seeing. Now, here's the cool thing. We can see this. This is also a very useful tip here because this is showing me the actual XY location of all those pads. I didn't perfectly set my reference point. I didn't snap to the center of the pad when I clicked to cut it to the clipboard. So pasting it back, they're actually just slightly off. Now, if you had a bunch of items that were just slightly off grid, you can easily put them back on here by group selecting these cells and editing 
and that's powerful. That'll get you out of trouble. That, that's the kind of thing that stops you making mistakes that shoot yourself in the foot. In this case, I want to put them all on, on that array pattern that I already had. And this is particularly useful in the PCB as well for things like mounting holes. You may have received a document, some other form, where you have a list of locations for mounting hole locations in exact XY coordinates in millimeters or mils or whatever, or according to datums. And you can actually bring that straight in here. And of course, I could edit that. I can edit these cells directly. Um, numer this is a number cell, so it won't, it's a coordinate cell, so it won't take in that. So I can say minus 400. And, and this panel is open with the current object selected, so I can move it out of the way, and you'll actually see one of those has moved exactly. Let's make it at plus 400, and you'll see where it's jumped to, right? So, so this is interactive as well, but they're all still selected, and I can still edit things in here. So here's where it gets super, super powerful. I can grab all of those XY coordinates and right-click, and I'm going to say... Copy with header. Copy with header. And that gives me that on the Windows clipboard, all that text in those cells with their column headings. Now I happen to have a blank Excel workbook open, and I can just paste that in. Now I can do all sorts of cool stuff because I can use Excel's, uh, you know, all the formulas, all the functions available to you in Excel. I can add in here. I could say, minus 400 and this should also be minus 400 um, and the next one down is going to be minus 400 it's going to be whatever the cell was before plus 200 because we, we're going across in the x axis and up in the y axis i'm going to start down in the corner so so a2 is set at minus 400 but a3 I'm going to set that to be a formula that says equals the previous cell plus 200, right? And then I'm going to fill that down for three more cells. So my first row of five, my first row of five is done. Okay. Actually, there should be one more there. And now the next one is going to be a copy of that. So I can grab these cells, copy, and grab these five and paste. So they have, so each row has the same X coordinates. Okay, and then I can copy those. And paste. And then just for the last one, copy those, and paste. So that, that gives me all my X spacings. Now for the Y, because I've already got the coordinates spread out across X, now it's going to be a bit simpler. We're starting at minus 400, and each row, each row of 5, we're going up by 200. So this is going to be the same. We're just going to fill down and until we get to the next row. And this one's going to be equals that previous one, plus 200, right, and I'm going to set, I'm going to set the dollar sign on the 6, so all five of these reference that previous B6 cell, right, so they're all at minus 200, and then equals B11, but it's going to be B11, uh, plus 200, sorry, plus 200 and I'll fill that for 5 and then we've got equals B$16 plus 200 do that for 5 and of course, you know, I could just, I know what the numbers are going to be. I could instantly calculate it in my head and just do 
fill fill downs and do this faster. But I, I just wanted to do it this way to show the power of this technique because this is extendable. Uh, this is extendable to numerous, numerous different things you can do. You, like even naming objects in Excel, you can concatenate strings. So you could have a whole array of data in Excel and create component names or symbol names in a, in a schematic lib library file uh, that, <laughs> that are derived from an Excel spreadsheet where you're building a name using a formula. So they're all consistent. That's powerful, right? Can't believe, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing such, this is, this is good stuff. So, so I've got all that done and now I can control, I can select all of that in Excel, control C and hit alt tab back to Altium designer and the list panel. And now I can select those same, uh, cells for the XY locations. And this time in the right click menu, instead of we did copy with header before, now we're doing smart grid paste, which also has a shortcut key in here, control shift V which is the same as smart paste in schematic. But anyway, so what we have is our X, Y, and I've got to tell it we have header rows, so it knows which is which. And then uh, if the X, Y coordinates don't appear in this dialog straight away, if X1, Y1 don't appear, you can click choose visible columns and then check X1, Y1. And those will be added into the, the bottom preview of the data. So now we have um, X1 and I can say go to X1. Paste column to attribute. And this gives us a preview of what it's going to do. And, and we can do the same to Y1 and Y1. But automatically determine paste looks at the column headings and does a, a best match. Um, but in any case no matter whether these are in order or not, because they're all exactly identical items, I don't care where they go, they will go to where I want them. One of them's gonna be at minus 400, minus 400, another's gonna be at minus 200, minus 400, and so on. So as soon as I do that and click OK, and either close the list panel or move it out of the way, you'll see there's my array of selected objects that I just moved formulaically based on X Excel and this is just exceedingly powerful. If you wanted to make, for example, the shape of an object and you needed to do it by coordinates or an array, think about this, an array of line segments that had to join at specific points and that was formulaic and this does come up. It does come up. You need to follow a curve shape or something you can generate that in Excel pretty easily using formulas and fills and, and whatnot. And having that generate your X, Y coordinates for certain objects or, or lists of vertices for line objects uh, is exceedingly powerful and being able to use that in this kind of way. So again, I hope this has been very helpful. Um, like I said, I, I believe this is a... <laughs> A game-changing capability if you know how to do it and where to find it. Remember that shortcut, Shift F12, Shift F12. And um, if you like this, our team's not paying me to make this video, so I appreciate your support of this channel. So click down below, um, click the thumbs up, hit the bell, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.